Hey, welcome back. In this video, let's look at the code for building prompts for Agentic AI systems. So in this lesson, we went over the basics of prompting, and you're probably wondering, why are we going through this? We know about prompting. Everyone does. Everyone's done some prompting. So the idea about this that we are presenting in this lesson is that you should start thinking of prompts as being built up of different elements, right? You can compose prompts uh, by modularizing them and then adding individual elements as you need them for your, any particular use case. So that's the core idea, and it's a very powerful one once you really fully grasp the, 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 the depth of that. In this video, let's look at the code. And the, the main purpose, again, is to understand the, the reusability and modularity, modularity of uh, uh, prompting in agent AI systems. All right, so let's see what we're going to cover. Um, the, the particular use case here, by the way, that we, we had in the examples was summarizing a technical publication. And this is a publication from the Ready Tensor platform. But let's separate ourselves from that use case, right? We are trying to create a system which is a prompting system that will hit an API and get you a response that you need. And that can be used for various reasons. It doesn't have to be summarizing some document. It could be writing a post. It could be about writing an email on a topic, right? Uh, where you give it some context and you want it to write an email for you. It could be some other reason. And so can you build a system that is so generic that can handle various use cases without you having to go in the code and change the code logic? That's, that's the core intent here. All right, so let's see what we'll look at in the, in the code section. So first of all, the particular use case here, which is summarizing the publication, there are going to be two elements that are specific to that. So one is the data, and then the other one is the prompt configuration. So this is the modular elements that we want to summarize, that we want to configure specific to the summarization task. Everything else here should be independent of it. The, the code you write, the, the calls you make, uh, how you generate the prompt using the configuration should all be independent of it. All right, let's look at the, the repo now. Uh, let's start with the data. Uh, this is included in the repo. This is a publication. Uh, this is a, quite a lengthy one, more than 4,000 words. We don't need to read it, but you have it in there, right? Again, this document is kind of independent, right? We, we, let's not worry about that. We could quite easily switch this out to be a completely different document and the tool should work. Next, let's look at the configurations. As I mentioned, the, the logic for the prompting and the behavior from the LLM you want is defined by the prompt configuration. Let's see a general template here, then we'll look at uh, the, the specific ones that we, will, we were using in the examples in the lesson. So here you have, we are using a YAML file. Uh, YAML is just one of the formats. We could have used JSON, XML, something else. Doesn't really matter. Uh, no, no, no big deal in this case. We are using YAML. And then we have various keys. You will recognize some of these keys here, instruction, role, context. These are the elements we were looking at here. Context, output format, role, persona. That is exactly what is defined here. Okay. Now, um, the only thing that is different here, description, that's more for documentation purposes, really to help you understand what this prompt was, uh, configuration was defined for. In the examples, we had five configurations, five prompts that we uh, tested. Uh, these are defined by these configurations. I'm calling them summarization prompt config one, two, three, four, and five. You will uh, remember that in the lesson, we built upon these examples one element at a time. So the first example, there was a very basic instruction, write a summary of an article or publication given to you. Uh, that was the first one, and we, we saw some result which was quite lengthy and not exactly what we wanted. So we started adding some more elements. In the second example, we added a, a, an output constraint, or a couple of them. Uh, one was related to the, the length of it. The other one related to not using bullet points. Uh, in the third example, we added a role. Uh, who is this meant to imitate? Like, who is the person writing this that, that the LLM is trying to mimic? We defined that and who it is for, the audience. That was defined in the role section. In example four, we added style and tone. In example five, we added goal, right? And so that's what we did. You will, uh, you will notice that in some of these configuration uh, configurations, we don't have all the elements, uh, and you want your code to be written to uh, be flexible for that. So we looked at the configuration. Let's now look at the actual code. And the prompt builder here is the code logic. There's other su supporting functions, but let's look at the prompt builder. Uh, now, this one takes the configuration object and uh, the input data. The input data is the publication in this case. And we're now going to construct the, the prompt using the configuration. We start with an empty prompt. If role is present, we add the role-related instruction. Uh, if instru uh, the instruction here is 
the particular task. In this case, write a summary of a given uh, article or publication. It's always mandatory, so uh, we, we are uh, uh, you know, throwing an error in case that is not given to you. And then we add the other elements. You can see context. If given, we are adding it, constraints, tone, and so on. This is pretty self-explanatory code, so I won't explain that. But really, all you're doing is constructing the prompt through the code. And it's written in a way that it's flexible, right? If some elements aren't present, it still works. OK, now let's look at the final element here, which is the, the, the runner, right? The main runner. Uh, you have different functions here. Let me just quickly show you the, the main function for where we are using Langchain, where uh, when, when it's given a prompt, we are uh, you know, defining an LLM here. In this case, we are using GPT-40 Mini. You can very easily switch it out. And then we, we give it that message and the response, we are returning that response, right? So that's a very basic uh, line chain functionality we are using. Uh, here's the main logic where uh, given the configuration of the, the prompt, we then define, we, we build the prompt. This is the, the builder that we just looked at where we were adding different elements to the prompt. Then we invoke that, uh, invoke the model using the prompt. And then the response, once we get it, we save it, right? So this is the core logic. And at the bottom here, we are basically specifying which, which configuration to run. Uh, let's, let's look at the last example, right? Example five, summarization prompt config five. Uh, so let's, let's run it, uh, run this right now. And this should take a few seconds. This is a pretty easy task. All right, let's look at the, the outputs that were generated. So first of all, I wanna just show you the, the, the prompt that was constructed the, by the builder. Uh, this is a this is a prompt. So at the top we have a role. Then we have a task coming from the configuration. Uh, we define the output format here, the style and tone related guidelines. Uh, there's a goal here. What the intent of this response is. Uh, then you have the main content of the publication, which is quite lengthy. And finally, we have the queue for the LLM to respond. Right. So that's the prompt that was constructed that we gave to the LLM, and the response we get from it is this one. Okay. Now, this is uh, every time you're going to get slightly different response because LLMs aren't deterministic, uh, but the overall, uh, you know, tone style communication is going to be pretty consistent in this case because we, we have that defined in our configuration. All right. So as I said, you could change this out to a different configuration and you will get different results. So you can try the other examples and it's all there in the, in the code. Uh, but I wanted to really emphasize the, the power of this, right? So in this case, we were summarizing a publication, but what if the task was something else? Now, uh, we were using this for summarization, and that's the prompt we, were, we gave to the, the model. Uh, but let's change it, right? So I have defined another prompt configuration here. This is a LinkedIn post generator prompt configuration. And I won't walk through all these details, but you will see some, some of the highlights here, right? Write a LinkedIn post about an article or publication given to you. So a slightly different task, right? This is not summarizing it. This is what you would want to copy and paste in a LinkedIn post to get people to read about this publication. And there's, uh, some of these instructions are the same in the configuration. And there are some new ones here. Uh, we did change the output constraints. We added a few things here at the bottom. Uh, the goal is different. There's, uh, you know, why you want to write it on LinkedIn is different than maybe a summarization task, right? So all of that is all driven through configuration. Let's run this. So I'm going to change the, the prompt configuration. And let's run this. All right, the output is here. Let's just quickly look at the prompt first. The prompt is constructed using that configuration. Uh, you will see now the task is different, right? A LinkedIn post, the output format is different. Some of the other elements are similar, but as you saw, we, we added a few more style and tone related guidelines and so on. So now let's look at the, uh, the response from the LLM and you will see it's a very different output, right? So uh, here we have a headline. Uh, this is written in a very different way, right? You're trying to grab attention of readers on LinkedIn. So there's some hook at the top. You can, you will see some differences here. There's some hashtags added here. And it's a very different style and tone, all driven by the configuration, right? We didn't change the line of code in our, uh, in, uh, in the main app. And that's the beauty of this, right? You're trying to do this in a way where the same app, same tool can be used for very different tasks. And all you have to do is change some, some centralized configuration and that changes the output. And uh, you know it's all driven through uh, data and configuration. So I hope uh, this this is something that you can realize the importance of. Um, and to to really emphasize this point and make you learn this concept, if, if this is not really clear to you, I'm going to throw a challenge at you. This this module, the first module, you have a project to do, right? And we define the use cases, right? So 
uh, you can choose your own, but we gave some examples. So for the first example was maybe you're building a chatbot for the Ready Tensor platform and you want uh, a way for the users to ask questions about publications, get answers. Uh, the second use case was related to LangChain documentation. Maybe you want to build a chatbot around that, right? And then we gave a Wikipedia related example uh, that you can do. Now, what if I said, build your chatbot in a manner that can handle all three use cases, right? Can you do that? And really, yes, you should be able to do that because if you write your code in a way that's completely independent of the use case, right? The use case should be injected, as I said, through the first two elements. The data is, of course, going to be different. Your tool should be reading it from a particular case uh, folder. And if you change the data, that should work. And the rest, any style tone related things, any, anything, any instructions about how the LLM, the chatbot should respond to user queries should be driven through configuration. There should be nothing in your code that is hard-coded to the, the use case about whether it's publication-related chatbots or Wikipedia or LangChain or any other use case, right? Can you do that? If you can do that, now you really build a, a powerful system because it's reusable for many other use cases. All right, that's your challenge. Hope uh, you can take, up, uh, take, take on that challenge and we look forward to your projects. Thank you, bye.